Hello, this is Stephanie, and I'm excited to present to you today Gamification of the Classroom, Tapping into a Student's Innate Desire to Learn. So here we go. First of all, I'm going to talk to you about the context of the pilot. Uh, my pilot was presented in six of my eighth grade classes. Uh, it was during our final Cold War unit. What you see right there is actually some of my students as they were leading a protest of uh, the Vietnam War. I got very into it. It was a two-week pilot. The time was shortened as a result to park testing, which is something I'll talk about a little bit later. And I collected and analyzed data from my students, and I also received input and feedback from two of my teachers who implemented their own version of my curriculum. All right, the parameters of the curriculum. What you have in front of you here is an example of the template, which I will be going over. My goal when I began developing this curriculum was to create a plug and play template that could be used by any teacher to gamify their classroom. I was inspired by a quote by James Paul Gee in Matthew Farber's book, Gamify Your Classroom. And he states, that teaching is a design process if you let teachers be professional. What we've done is deprofessionalize them by writing a script for them and giving them a test booklet or a game or orders of what to do. My desire was to treat teachers as professionals and to give them a tool, a template, which they could use to reflect upon what was taking place in the classroom, what the kids were learning, and then use that information and iterate as necessary. The template explains the process of developing objectives, a journey, and quests. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through that right now. Here we go. Okay, so we start um, with instructional and expressive objectives. So I advise the teacher to first decide what particular skill or item of knowledge that they wish the student to acquire. And I have found that those, for example, for me, would be the core knowledge objectives or the state of Colorado objectives for eighth grade. Then the expressive objectives, what experience, situation, or problem that you wish for your students to engage. Mine was actually a final protest, and that was the image that you saw. Then an essential part of gamification is actually acknowledging learning styles. And I have a survey that teachers can use in order to determine what are the learning styles of their students, visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. Now a teacher may want to write down which students fall into the category, or simply this can be a reminder that this is something that they need to acknowledge and establish. This could also be where they write down where the um, which guilt each student is in. All right, the learning activities. So creating the journey. When I first began this process, I personally thought the journey would be the most challenging aspect of the curriculum. But after working with my colleagues, they shared with me that the journey was actually the easiest and the most enjoyable. So I devised a five W questions in order to help a teacher determine or create the journey. Why? What is the objective of the journey? Why should your students take this journey? Journey. What? What is the conflict? Who? Who are the main characters? Where is this conflict? And when does the conflict take place? Now I did have one colleague share with me that she actually preferred to write the journey after she wrote the quests. Now the other teacher said she preferred to write the journey beforehand. I have found that when I wrote the journey, essentially what I was doing was taking my lecture notes and placing them into an engaging and uh, entertaining story. 
for the students. Moving on, we get to the quests. Quests is simply another name for an assignment. And based on some of the feedback that I received from one of my colleagues, I placed the quests in order of Bloom's taxonomy. So what you see here is comprehension, applications, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Finally, then there is the assessment section there and, or evaluation. Before the unit starts, I've created a pre-unit survey that a teacher can use to identify student learning styles and also to acknowledge their or to gather information on their opinions regarding different techniques that are used within gamification. Throughout the unit, there are quests which serve as a formative assessment. The quests have a requirement of an 80% proficiency in order to be eligible for XP, powers, and rewards. This is truly a formative assessment because students have the opportunity to evaluate themselves and see where they're struggling and what they're learning. And if they do not earn an 80% proficiency rate, they can go back redo it and resubmit it. Finally, the post assessment or post evaluation would be your unit exam. And if the teacher so desires, they could also do a survey that would be evaluating the changes in their learning styles. All right, the process of collecting and analyzing data. The first thing that I did is I created a pre-unit survey and I used this to determine the stu student learning styles and then I created guilds based on those learning styles. The survey also helped me understand student opinions regarding typical gaming methodologies. And I will go ahead and show you what that survey looked like. The first two questions of the survey address the learning styles. Now a teacher could choose to do more questions and perhaps um, make it a bit more scientific, but this gave me an idea and also it created an interesting discussion for the students because we talked about their learning styles. Then I move on to questions regarding um, if they prefer to learn via lecture or as a game, if they enjoy competing with others, if goals motivate them to complete their work, if it's important for them to win, if they learn more when they're having fun, and if they're motivated by how they're doing compared to others. You'll notice that this was done using a Likert style. All right, after the pre-unit survey, then the next thing I wanted to discuss was um, my formative assessments. And these were uh, my journey responses. So this took place throughout the entire unit. There were four junior journeys that the students took, I guess you could say. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what those looked like. So what you see right here in front of you is our LMS, our Learning Management System Canvas. And we put all, we place all our lectures and our homework and assignments, et cetera, et cetera, and discussions here on Canvas. And this right in front of you right now, as the title says, is the last stage of the journey. And each one had a little bit of a story. And as I mentioned earlier, the stories ended up being a way that I could incorporate lecture information. And then in addition, there was always a question. And this question helped me to evaluate the students and understand where they were at in their learning. And then for me to decide what changes I needed to make the next day in my class. Now I wanted to go ahead and discuss some of the adaptations that I made here. I will address those more in my next slide, but one thing that I noticed is initially I had students answer the questions, this, like right here, 
on Canvas as an assignment. And it became very overwhelming for me as far as grading, and it was a little bit tedious and overwhelming for the students. And it wasn't serving its purpose really well because its purpose was for me to check their comprehension. So what you'll see on this one right here is I have a link, and this link actually goes to simply a Google survey that I created. I found this to be a lot easier. So the students simply submitted their answer here. There was no grade. They weren't concerned about it. But I was able to then look at one document and get a bird's eye view of how all my students were doing and then evaluate if I needed to make any changes the next day. Another change that I made is that I ensured each day as a warm up when we were addressing our journeys that the students had time to meet as a guild. One person would read aloud the journey they would discuss what they thought the answer was, and then they would all submit it together. And some of the data that I'm gonna go over a little bit later, you will see that that definitely improved <laughs> their um, content, uh, retention, and comprehension. All right, so next, after I had my pre-unit, my formative, was my end of unit survey. So what I did is I had a summative assessment regarding the journeys and then also the student opinions regarding gamification methodologies. So I'm going to go ahead here and show you the end of unit survey that I created here. This is really interesting because what I did here is I created a survey, and this is for my period four, that had this the exact same four questions that the student students answered throughout the unit. And I decided to survey two of my classes. I surveyed my honors class, and then I surveyed one of my lowest performing non-honors class. And again, these are the exact same questions that the students had to answer after they read each journey. These questions were given to the students a week after the unit ended because after the unit was over, the students went to spring break. The data that I collected on this survey shows the percentage of students that earned a proficiency rate of 80% or above on these journey response questions. In my honors class, 97% of the students achieved proficiency on question one, 90% on question two, 97% on question three, and 100% on question four. In my non-honors class, out of 28 students, 89% earned a proficiency on question one, 82% for question two, 93% for question three, and 82% for question four. It was very encouraging to gather these results and see that even after the week of spring break, the majority of students in my low performing class earned proficiency on the unit content information. All right. Now, lastly, another um, data, well, actually, second to last, another form of data that I collected was from my student advisory board. And what I'm going to show you here is a Google document that I created and my students took part of. So how this worked is in the beginning of my pilot, I was very open and straightforward with my students and let them know what I was doing. And I said, I need to gather some information. Who would be interested in giving me some feedback? I had about 10 students tell me that they were interested. And so I created this document. You'll see, I started out the discussion, initial response to journey. What are your thoughts? What would you like to stay the same? What would you like to change? Suggestions. And then the students just simply started chatting and giving me their opinions. And it was wonderful. 
they're so creative and uh, I love giving students ownership and they come up with ideas that personally I would have never thought before. So their comments influenced the changes that I made in the journey and also uh, the adaptations that I made on uh, my templates and my curriculum. Lastly, peer feedback. One of my teachers said to me, quote, I actually enjoyed writing a unit plan and was able to easily follow it due to the quests and the use of Bloom's taxonomy. All right, curriculum adaptations. I addressed a few and I will talk about a little bit more. These are some of the quotes that I received from the students when I was asking for some feedback on their thoughts. Quote, it was easier to remember because it was given as a story. I remember stories. I like the story, but I wish there was more detail. It's hard for me to understand just small parts of a story. I need the full picture. All right, so what I took away from some of these quotes and some other discussions was that I needed to differentiate the journey journeys and I needed to create levels. One thing I do with my essay tests is the questions are uh, differentiated by levels green, blue, and black, so the ski levels. Students told me they wanted me to do the same to have harder levels. Some kids just really want to compete in every form that they can. And uh, other students said that they um, or what I learned from the students is that I need to provide the entire journey as an option for some students. As you see from one of the quotes, it was hard for them to understand just a small part. They needed to see the full picture. So perhaps just present the whole journey at the beginning and then go through the parts. Provide opportunities for the students to read the journey or present it in class. One thing I will talk about is uh, how the data shows that when students had an opportunity to read the journeys aloud, they actually retained more information. Due to my time constraints, I was not able to do this for each of the journeys. Ideally, I would have loved to have some of my students perform it in front of the class because I have uh, several kinesthetic learners that prefer that methodology. So that would be an adaptation. Lastly, gamification as a choice. And here I want to go to a um, survey that I took on SurveyMonkey. And I took this at the end of the unit and asked a variety of different questions. But specifically what I want to focus on right now is uh, the idea of games and competition. Um, so looking at this one right here, I learn best when the lesson is presented as a game. We're seeing 24% and 12% strongly agree, so 36%. But then we have a 33 undecided, and it's important to recognize we have 24 and 5, so 30% that are in the disagree. So that as a teacher, it's important that we acknowledge perhaps this is not the right methodology for all students. Now, I enjoy competing with others a strong majority of um, that enjoy competing with each other. But again, it is important as a teacher to respect that there's 17% that do not. Goals motivate me to complete work. I want to skip to it is important for me to win. So we see 31% and 10%. So 41% say yes, it is important for me to win. We have 24 that are undecided and then 24 and 8. So about 32 that disagree. So as a teacher, it is essential, again, to recognize that minority that's there, motivated by how I'm doing compared to others, 33 and 24, so significant, and then a significant undecided, very small minority that is in the disagree section. So my point being with this information is that gamification needs to be presented as a choice. I personally, in my classroom, provide it as a choice. Those students that want to earn powers and rewards and badges can, and it does not affect their grade in any way. And But what I've seen is that those students are the ones that are more motivated to learn and are more successful and do retain more information. Also, gamification as a choice or differentiate gamification for teachers. One of my peers said she loves the journeys, she loves the quests, but 
she is daunted about the idea of keeping track of the XP and the badges and the rewards. And there are simplified manners to do that, whether it just be a sticker, sticker, sticker chart or you create a Google document that everybody puts their information on. So there are modifications for that. But it's important that each teacher does what um, is comfortable for them and also recognizes the needs and desires of their student population. All right, moving on to challenges. Time was the big one. As I already mentioned, our unit was reduced to two weeks instead of three weeks due to park testing. Some of my students were either testing with me or were in study hall. And those in study hall had to begin without verbal direction. So I collected data on my journeys and it shows me how many students actually competed each journey. So in my honors class, I collected data from 51 students. The introduction to the journey, 10 students did not complete it. The second stage of the journey, five did not complete it. And the third stage, seven did not complete it. For my non-honors students, I collected data from 109 students. 49 students did not complete the introduction. For my second stage, 45 did not. In my third stage, 28 did not. Now, it's important to note that for both the classes, uh, by the third stage, students were uh, completing the journey as a class warm-up. So the 28 that still did not complete the third stage most likely were due to absences or technology problems or simply just didn't press the submit button. Sometimes that happens. But I definitely did notice that it was essential that the journeys were completed together and in class. And I imagine that my data would have been different if I was able to do that beginning from the introduction of the journey. Some successes though, definitely the journeys Guilds, competition. So here's some of the quotes from my students. Quote, thank you for creating guilds using our learning styles. I really like that. This student came up to me right after I had created them with a big grin on his face and he was so happy to be working with people that were like-minded. Quote, I remember the story and the facts because I get to know the people in the story. There is more emotion. And finally, from one of my teachers, quote, I now finally understand how to gamify my classroom. And what you see on the right here is just some of the data that I collected. This one is particularly look, looking at lecture versus game and competing with others. So the columns on the left side, uh, the very far left columns was asking, um, I learn more when the teacher presents new information using a lecture. We have 59% that are undecided and 24% that agree. Now, interestingly, compared to the next column, which asks, uh, I prefer when a lesson is presented as a game. We have 41% that agree and 41% undecided. I find this very interesting because it's either presented as a lecture or as a game. This data to me right here shows the importance of action research because all the quantitative data that we can collect can still be um, put into question perhaps by the discussions and the insight that takes place as a result to action research. Now the pie graph that you have on the right there, the question was, I enjoy competing with others. 59% that, that say that they agree and we have 12% that disagree. So clearly they enjoy competing with each other. So this was some good feedback for me and seeing that journeys, guilds, and gaming and competition motivates them. All right, lastly, looking at action research. What I have found in regards to action research is the benefit of experiential knowledge. By including experiential knowledge, a teacher is able to encourage greater recursive and social justice validity. My opinion is that action research is very similar to a living organism. It is living and breathing. And in my classroom, I use the term organic quite frequently because my class is organic. I reflect upon the information and the feedback that I get from the students and then I develop lessons based on that. 
Action research, as cited in Pine, quote, is an iterative process in which knowledge arises from an examination of practice. I believe that this iterative process can only be done within the classroom while the program is being experienced. So, not from the ivory tower, as you see in the image on the slide. Now, I recognize, of course, that experiential knowledge is subjective, but when it's coupled with educational research and quantitative data, I believe that its influence and impact upon teachers in the field will be greater. For, honestly, it will be more relevant. Also, action research allows teachers to reflect upon daily encounters, which are essential. Pine describes observation as being, quote, fundamental for effective teaching, teaching for teacher decision-making and for making judgments. So by creating my action research journal, I was able to have those reflections upon daily encounters. And I was able to discover the, quote, hidden side of my classroom life, where everyday practices become so ordinary and so routine that they often become invisible. Lastly, I find that action research is responsive. And as Pine states, quote, it is through the observer's encounter with the event that multiplicity of meanings emerges. Subsequent reflection on documented observation can generate a richer understanding of the multiple meanings found in the situation. And because I was able to experience this richer understanding as a result of action research, I was able to better understand my initial research question, which was, does gamification improve student engagement, motivation, and academic achievement? Without action research, I would not have been able to experience, reflect, and respond. This has truly been an enlightening experience for me. I have so enjoyed the opportunity to take an idea that was planted about a year ago and see it come to fruition to a pilot, a curriculum, and a template that I believe can be very useful for other teachers. I have presented this information at our Colorado Social Studies Conference about a week ago, and the feedback I received from the teachers there was outstanding. I'm very encouraged by it, and I'm excited because I will be speaking at uh, Innovate Education Colorado Conference in June. I'm excited to see what kind of feedback we get there. So thank you very much for this opportunity to present to you, and I hope that it has been informative and a bit entertaining. Thank you.